well and staying safe and healthy out there. Today I want to work on this recording. This is Joe Henderson's Isotope. Um, I've been on a Joe Henderson binge lately, uh, just digging all his, uh, his compositions and just kind of checking out his catalog. And uh, he has some amazing, some of the, the most amazing compositions. Um, very, uh, very modern, uh, for lack of better words. Even, even for today, today's standard, Joe's stuff is still very modern. It's like, in my opinion, between him of course, Wayne Shorter, uh, I liken Wayne Shorter uh, and Joe Henderson to be, you know, like the, even for, for their time, they were very forward thinking composers and, and uh, players. But particularly Joe, as far as a player wise, I mean, Joe was, you know, definitely uh, one of the prolific tenor men of all times, in my opinion. Uh, it's like, yeah. Coltrane and Joe Henderson, you know, as far as like pushing the envelope, in my opinion. Um, so I want to go through, uh, I'm just going to go through the melody of Isotope, particularly for guitar, because it's a, uh, you know, it deals with a lot of um, intervals that may not be as common to get to on the instrument, um, you know, for, for especially for guys who play mostly linear style playing. So I want to show you all how I'm choosing to finger it to make sure I execute um, and, and get to as much meat of the melody. The melody actually has a counterpart melody, which is uh, even more complex as far as trying to, to cop for guitar. So I, um, I'm, you'll, you'll notice I'm approaching, I'm trying to get some of that counter melody in because it, it, it definitely allows for some great uh, harmonic contrast for the melody, but realizing also too that you want to be able to execute it as, as cleanly as possible so it's kind of difficult to to uh, to get the, the entire piano melody that's in the, um, in the in the melody statement of the original but anyway let's go through it and So let's go through Isotope. Um, as I explained at the beginning, it's a very hip. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like a monk tune almost, although it's a Joe Henderson. I wonder if Joe was uh, thinking about monk when he wrote it. It has a lot of dissonance, uh, particularly how the piano uh, it plays a counter melody, which I said like at the beginning, I haven't necessarily worked out a way to incorporate the entire counter melody, uh, which would be a, a nice task to complete but uh, I did incorporate a few of the melodic uh, or the the harm harmonic ideas so here we go let's let's go through it um, it's gonna go be like this I'm gonna start with my index finger so you're gonna go so I'll stop right there and explain what I'm doing I'm just playing index alternate picking double stop right here so this is what I was saying when I try to incorporate some of the harmony uh, the, this is just you know two um, E and uh, concert C then I then he goes that's a tricky part right there Although the melody is just playing, uh, Joe is just playing a D, I chose to play like an uh, inversion of an A11 with the D on top just to give some uh, additional harmony in it. Particularly, when, you know, like when you're playing in a trio or a duo or even solo guitar, you want to add as much harmony uh, in the melody, you know, like a chord melody so that people can follow along uh, with the harmony of the song. So 
Here we go. Then we're gonna go. So this right here. I, I, I found it easy to play this little figure right here. And, and just so that I let you guys know, when I'm coming up with the fingerings for some of these melodies, I'm always thinking chords, right? Because the chords, you know, the, the melodies are within the chords. Um, so, you know, the, the song is in a, it's like a blues and C. Um, so I'm starting here, you know, you have C there. I'm starting on the C right here. So although some of this, you know, you can't always necessarily, I mean, you can always find the chords within the, the melody, right? But sometimes you just have to, you know, I just come up with uh, easy fingerings based on where I am or where I land from the previous uh, melody note, you know, what's, what's easiest to grab. That's just, then he's gonna go A, all oh, minor third, moving down in minor thirds, same, same pattern or same, you know, set of notes, except this time, instead of going down here, because the melody is starting over, I'm just going to stay right here. See, and, and it lay, lays right back into the melody. So. He's gonna do a, uh, a sweep right here. Then play the same thing again. I'm sorry, the last part is. That's how he ends and goes into the solo. And that's pretty much it. So um, one of the, the, the key things, so you always find little when you're learning songs at least for when I'm learning songs I always try to find areas of opportunity or challenge um, and then just kind of really lay into those until it becomes comfortable for me because you know by habit we have a have tendencies to play certain ways and the idea of, of practicing and shedding and, and learning new stuff is to to break the habits or get to a place where things aren't habitual it's just all coming out of your head immediately like it's very spont spontaneous you know of course everybody has signature lines and runs and things that they lean on but um, there's a there's a Joe Pass uh, book called uh, here it is right here this is the book so in that book uh, Joe mentions uh, the fact that you know the objective is to not play the same lines like you want to you want to create new lines you want to just let your mind be free and explore new new lines and the only way in my opinion the best way to do that is to just keep learning more stuff and learning different approaches and ways uh, to to approach different harmonies and things like that so also you know not just playing uh, lines but also rhythmically like coming up with different rhythm rhythmic patterns things in different odd meter or whatever to add interest you know it might be three notes but even in, in this melody, um, so a quick, so, you know, that might be a little challenge. And it is, um, you know, it's kind of awkward uh, for your, if you're used, accustomed to playing um, 
more um, alter, alternate picking, you're gonna have to negotiate whether you start down for a clean or for a clean sound, or you're gonna start up. So those are things that you'll have to negotiate for yourself. But the fact that you're even considering that is is definitely a step in the right direction because you're kind of getting out of your comfort zone, hopefully, um, and and exploring some other something new that eventually, hopefully, you'll become comfortable with too, and then you move on. So to me, that's that's all a part of growth. Once you become comfortable with something, in my opinion, you've mastered it. As long as it's clean and everything is 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 feeling comfortable for you and then you have to move on to the next thing that's uncomfortable because if things are comfortable for you in my opinion then you're not growing anymore you're just kind of like you're just going you know and for me the objective is to constantly grow you know um, because that's you know I feel like that's that's what we were supposed to do right so hopefully that helps I'm sorry that, you know I didn't want to make it too long and you know hopefully what I just said makes some sense uh, and if not, you know, you can always email me or message me for a, a deeper ex explanation. But uh, but definitely check out uh, this tune is this record is Mode for Joe, um, and it's a killing killing record. Uh, you know, as I always, you know, I get excited about these these different uh, classic recordings.